Last year, we got a school fund to uh, further development online assessment for all the uh, first year units. And um, one of my units was uh, introduction to interpreting. That was the first, uh, first year unit, and it was on the list of the development. So today, we, our presentation will be uh, just uh, focusing on that particular unit. And first, we are going to talk about the distinction of the peer assessment task for teaching uh, interpreting. And then we will talk about how we prepared uh, ourselves as well as the students. Uh, and we also, um, Jeremy will talk about the actual steps that we uh, went through for this uh, assessment task. And uh, we had a lot of problems. We are going to talk about it. And also hopefully we can get feedback or comments or suggestions, advice from, uh, from you in this room. Um, and uh, I will also uh, talk about the students' feedback, which was quite uh, um, encouraging, that is, uh, to our surprise. Now, the first thing is uh, how could we use online blended learning to teach interpreting? Um, I did a little bit of research when I heard that we have to uh, expand online blended learning for this particular unit. We had been used the online quizzes for the theoretical part in probably uh, for two or three years. So what shall we do is then just uh, the interpreting part. Then first of all, all of the tasks or assignments or assessment items are oral tasks. And secondly, if we put them online, then we have to deal with the sound files, which means we have to record it, and then we have to upload it onto uh, the computer or onto the views, then we can uh, mark it. And the third thing for interpreting is that everything has to be uh, real time. Students don't have time to prepare in the real industry, in the real profession. And also, they are not as luxury as translation. They can't have time to repeat. So the task must have been real time. Uh, so far, we did have online assessment on translation uh, teaching in other institutions. And I did find uh, uh, literature about uh, peer review but not online, on hard copy, again, about translation. What we were going to do was actually combine online and uh, peer assessment together. Just uh, taking about these two items, these two aspects, we are still facing, uh, we already facing a quite a new challenge. And then on top of that, we are going to do with the interpreting task so this is a, a really a new trial. So I would say, to my knowledge, this was the first attempt in the area of training uh, interpreters. Um, first thing we find that we need to do is to get ad advice from the team to see whether the things we have in mind are feasible. So we. Um, got advice, very useful advice from uh, uh, Gina and Maria. So I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to you all, to you both. And then we need to we need to prepare our students. At the beginning of uh, last semester, in the very first lecture, I told them that we were going to have uh, a little portion of the assessment tasks to be done online, and they have to do not only uh, their own work, but also have to mark their peer students' work. And they got so nervous, especially those uh, uh, mature students, they just thought, oh, it's not possible, I don't know anything about a computer, so what about if I failed with the technology? So we just um, 
uh, put everything online in writing and also uh, give oral um, explanations in lecture time almost in every lecture from the very beginning. And we also, I also wrote them emails to set up the uh, steps very clearly. And uh, uh, Jeremy also prepared a short video. After all of those uh, explanations, then we also set up a trial. We call it a dummy run. Um, the real assessment was to ask students to interpret uh, a text from note uh, from a language other than English into English. We have four different languages in this unit, Arabic, Spanish, Chinese, and Japanese. The first trial was just to upload one text, which is called a side translation. Side translation is used very often in courtrooms and in hospital settings. For example, if a, written, a new piece of written evidence is provided to a court, then the interpreter will have to read the document for three minutes, up to three minutes, and then start to interpret orally to the room in front of the court. And also, sometimes medical uh, report will be translated, interpreted in this way. And for us, upload a text file is less challenging then upload a sound file, and then ask a student to interpret, and then record and upload back another sound file. So we started with a little bit easier one. The steps will be um, talked by um, my colleague Jeremy, and I just say, uh, talk about what um, we actually did when I explained to our students. I say that there are two parts. This First part is that they have to side translate from uh, load into English. And then part two, they have to do online peer marking and also uh, do reflective comments on their own work. They have to complete both parts, um, otherwise they wouldn't get a mark. So that is a, a little bit pushing part from me. And I also wrote the uh, email to the students, remind them the time and the time limit. They have to, once they click start, they have to complete everything within 20 minutes. And I mentioned the uh, steps from step one to step six, and then I remind them they have, to, they have a time limitation. And we also, I also said, at this time, don't worry about the second part, it's just a, Concentrate on your part one, we will lead you step by step when part two comes to the, uh, when the time comes to, um, uh, comes for the part two. And we also set up some uh, quiz Q&A to make them feel uh, a little bit more relaxed, relaxed and also confident about all these new things. Now, steps. Yes, okay. Thank you, Shanga. That's very good. So we're at the stage now where we want the students to perform their um, oral uh, translation and upload it. So effectively what you see there is just a straight out screenshot from the actual um, unit. And this, as you can see, is for the Chinese, the people who are doing this from uh, Chinese into English. And there were three others, Arabic into English, um, Spanish into English and Japanese into English. And they download their PDF, which you can see up there in the blue, have a squiz, then they had to record it, get it off their device, get it onto the view site and upload within 30 minutes. Now the reason why we had such a short interval was so there would be very little, if any, collusion. Um, a mature age group like this possibly wouldn't stoop to collusion, but we wanted to actually make it as watertight as possible. You think I'm sort of a bit uh, naive there, Dennis? Just, just, just a bit ages. <laughs> so that was step one, and they practiced that before. Now, then what occurred at this point was uh, these, uh, these translations, the, uh, the audio files would be marked in the usual way because we wanted to use peer assessment initially pedagogically uh, rather than scare the students with it being the full event with full, full peer assessment of their marks at least initially. And then, step two, 
the rubric, the criteria associated with uh, assessing that particular piece was introduced and worked on in the lecture. In the lecture, and it looks like this in terms of the paper-based version. So then, my job was to, and this is where we did a lot of work behind the scenes. We couldn't use one of the existing plugins like Tiermark because it was audio file. Uh, we had to actually design our own peer assessment tool. So what we effectively did was we set up a series of groups. Zhang Dong sent me through hard copy via email. I want these groups, each consisting of three people, these student numbers, these names, um, and we labeled them up accordingly. And I think we had two Spanish students, didn't we, Zhang Dong? So they peer assessed each other. Yes. yes. There was no collusion there at all. <laughs> and anonymity was a bit difficult because we had we had two two of those. But we had quite a number of Arabic students, and we had quite a significant co number of the cohort were uh, ch Chinese. Uh, so that was that was perhaps from the peer assessment point of view a bit more robust. Okay. And now this is my view of the screen, but effectively what I had to do was use the survey tool. The survey tool gives anonymity uh, to the people who are responding, and that's an important part of the process. Uh, and of course, rather interestingly, peer assessment, the larger the cohort, the better, because the, the, the anonymity factor is increased and the collusion factor drops. But that's, that's another story. So as you can see, this is, this is the instructor view, but the students, depending on the group they were in, would have a particular um, link that they could click on and it would take them into this. So effectively, question one in the survey tool had been adapted to become download this audio file and listen to it or listen to this audio file, click on this audio file. Then question two, question three, question four, question five, etc we were actually using the sliding scale from the survey tool, we borrowed it, and we actually then used each of the questions for one of the rubric criterion, criteria, criterion, I don't know, um, and, with the, and the, the assessor could then make his or her assessment, was it very poor, below average, average, good, very good, excellent, and so on. Now this was repeated three times. Question eight or nine, I forget which it, which it was, was then, listen to this file and answer the questions. And the same questions would follow. Representative rubric, uh, criteria for, same set of criteria for exactly the same situation, just a different file. And then finally with the third one. So effectively at the end of it, the students had um, peer assessed their own file, a bit like editing. You go back to it after a period away and you notice all the things you want to change. So they would notice their own work differently. And then they were asked to actually peer assess two colleagues within each of these groups using the survey tool. So this bit was quite mechanical and quite administrative and the possibility of making mistakes was quite high because when you actually download the files from the grade center column, the labeling is interesting, shall we say. Um, so I'm not quite sure if there's another way we could have done that, um, but that's for next time. So there were some admin issues, but in the main our students negotiated this very well um, and then we came to the back end of the exercise which was simply the students commenting on how they found the experience. So I think at this stage, Shang Dong, it's back to you. Would you care to walk us through this piece? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. There you go. Uh, yes, when we uh, got the dummy run set up, and then when we got uh, the second part set up, both myself and also Jeremy were kind of under snow. The uh, emails are just flooding in. They just uh, said, uh, we got uh, so many technical problems, this happened or that happened. And uh, so we just uh, thought maybe students, they really didn't like it. Uh, and uh, how, but when we looked at uh, the result of their feedback, we just uh, found the question, the answers to our question one were very, really encouraging. Um, we say to question one, the site translation peer assessment activity was very useful to me. Agree, strong agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree, and the disagree, strong disagree, not uh, uh, applicable and unanswered. We can see uh, from the bottom, uh, none of them 
uh, in non uh, unanswered. Everyone answered the question. Strong agree was 14.29 percent uh, percent. Agree in red on this pie was 67.86. So if we add up these two items together, we can see more than 80 percent of students had a quite a positive view about this uh, activity, a completely very new one, was challenging, was the one made them very nervous at the beginning of the, of the semester and also throughout the whole uh, process. But they said that they loved it. And uh, uh, neither agree or no, uh, no, no disagree, which is in bright green, is 10%.71. Disagree only uh, 3.57. Strong disagree zero. Um, and not applicable. We don't know what this really means. Uh, it's uh, 3.57. This is uh, probably for me to to follow up. But uh, we cannot track back the student's name on this survey. That is that was also why we used the survey tool. But uh, it's interesting uh, to us. And also question two was an open, uh, open answer. It said, uh, what did you learn as a result from the peer assessment side translation exercise? Students wrote, I just pick up some of them and uh, you can find some misspelling. They are just uh, in their first year. By the time they finish the, the degree and sit for the NATIO accreditation translation exam, I hope they can uh, correct all of the uh, errors. First, the student said, I've learned what make a good site, uh, site translation, such as fluency, intonation, grammar, pronunciation. Sometimes, even confidence of an interpreter is critical. Additionally, it gives a chance to learn from my peers. Some of them did very good site translation based on the elements I just mentioned. And the second one said, I can find out what should I improve and what should I learn from my classmates. Third one said, I can find my inadequacies uh, when compared with the other students' assessment, and I can learn other good ways to interpret a sentence or a paragraph which I did not perform well from other students, comparing with other students. Uh, and the next one, I want to go through uh, all of these. Um, let's just pick the very last one. Uh, it's a very good summarize, actually. It said, I learned to pay attention to the voice, pitch, tone, hesitations, concentrate more on accuracy of content, vocabulary, and using the correct terminology. Also, I should not do, I should not do, uh, make any additions or uh, omissions. So they learned quite a lot, not by only uh, peer marking their fellow students' work, but also through the reflective comments on their own. Um, the result was quite positive, and uh, so we decided to try again next semester, and in the future, if we can resolve all of the technical problems and make sure technology is reliable, then we would like to do consecutive interpreting tasks, which, is, which means we put on sound files and then students have to listen and then interpret, which, we, which will be a little bit more closer to the real situation in the profession. Um, now, advice and suggestions and comments which could help us to make this uh, kind of setting up issues uh, much easier or less problematic. Thank you. <laughs>